Sai Ram. The Shirdi Sai Sacharita records an incident wherein there is one very wealthy and rich person who has achieved the heights of success in the worldly sphere. And yet, because he is not happy, he decides that he needs Brahmagnana. Whatever be the heights of success that we reach in the worldly spheres, in our education, in our career, in our wealth, in our influence, in our relationships, we will never find peace of mind, contentment and most importantly, joy unless we achieve success in the spiritual sphere. And that success is defined by the attainment of Brahma Vidya or Brahma Jnana, the ultimate knowledge. And so he travels to Baba and he accosts Baba one afternoon and he tells, Baba, I have traveled from so far. I have taken great pains and great troubles to come to you because I heard you confer Brahma Jnana. Can you please give me Brahma Jnana? Then I will consider that all my troubles and travails and difficulties have been paid for. Baba tells him, yes, sit down and makes him sit amongst the others who are there and then begins to converse on different topics. Such a way that this person actually forgets that he had come to Baba for Brahma Jnana. So, so many topics are discussed. And again, suddenly after a while, this person remembers and he says, Baba, my Brahma Jnana, you know, like don't forget it. Then Baba calls one little boy and tells him, go to such and such a person and get me a loan of five rupees, please. And he looks at this person as if to say that, let me get this done and then I will give you your Brahma Jnana and continues with other discussions. This boy returns and he says, Baba, that person's home was locked. Oh, is it? Then go to this grocer's place and you know, ask him to loan me five rupees. And this boy again runs. Again, Baba continues talking about other things. This rich person is getting impatient and he's wondering when will Baba come to what I have come here to seek from him. Two, three times this boy returns and nobody is there either ready to give the loan or they're not at their home. You know, Baba knows where each person is at every moment in time. There are so many experiences. In fact, Swami is this experience where he knew how a devotee is in difficulty in Ankara. It's so beautiful and eye-opening. That's at this link above. So Baba now when he's doing this, the rich man says, Baba, please, can you just give me my Brahma Jnana? Baba looks at this rich man and he says, you have to be ready for Brahma Jnana. You have to transcend the Pancha Pranas, the five vital airs and the Panchendriyas, the five senses. And then you will achieve it. You are not able to go beyond five rupees. You have seen me struggling to get five rupees. I have told you that once I get that, I will confer what you want. In your pocket, there is a wad of currency notes. Couldn't you spare five rupees? That's where the matter ends. Dear brothers and sisters, theoretically we know that achieving Brahma Jnana or Brahma Vidya is the only way to get ultimate contentment, peace and joy. Ready. We have to be ready. Of course, the for us to get fruits, we need the land to be fertile, we need manure, we need water, we need all of this. But we also have to remember that despite all of these being there, if the tree is not mature, it can't yield fruits. So too, while we need God's grace and blessings, we need also to be ready to achieve it. And here is a story and an experience that will inspire us, thrill us and motivate us to rest not till the goal of Brahma Jnana is achieved. This is the story of Dr. Alreja narrated by Dr. Anil Kumar during a summer punt session. While Dr. Alreja is a medical doctor, Dr. Anil Kumar is a doctorate in chemistry. He was my teacher at the Satsai Institute of Higher Learning. Now for those who are unaware, Dr. Alreja had the greatest blessing of being Swami's personal physician. And I would not like to take up too much time introducing him here because there is a complete video and a beautiful satsang in this link above that does exactly the same, which tells us a background about the greatness of Dr. Narottam Alreja. It was the year 1994 
and as is evident in that previous video link that I mentioned, Dr. Narottam Alreja was the superintendent and the head of the Sri Satisai General Hospital at Puttaparthi. He was also the visiting physician for the students in their hostels. And Dr. Anil Kumar was not a doctor back then, but he was a teacher, a lecturer in Swami's college and he was in charge of the dispensary in the hostel. And that is how he happened to have close interactions with Dr. Alreja. One day, as they were returning from the hostel to the mandir when Dr. Anil Kumar was dropping off Dr. Alreja, he pleaded with him to share one experience and that is when Dr. Alreja shared this. So Dr. Alreja would complete all his duties in the general hospital, go home, have lunch, a quick nap and after that, before going to the hospital again, he would visit Swami, give Swami an update of all that is happening at the general hospital. One day, when he went home, had lunch and had a nap, he had a beautiful dream. In that dream, he was in a vast ground, digging the ground, you know, he was digging a deep pit, a pit that was about six feet in length, three, four feet in breadth and six feet in depth. This is often done as a grave, right? <laughs> he dug this pit and then he came out and started digging a second pit. And then he came out and started digging a third pit. When he was doing this, he heard a loving and joking voice of Swami. How long will you keep doing this? And he looked and he saw Swami standing there. And he said, Swami, unless you shower your grace on me, I think I will have to keep doing this only. And at that time, Swami told him a shloka from the Sankhya Yoga of the Bhagavad Gita. And when Swami told that, Dr. Alreja came out of the pit and he said, Swami, you only must confer that on me. If you don't confer it, I will be stuck doing this. Though Dr. Alreja and Dr. Anil Kumar did not explain the significance of the dream, how I understood it as that unless we achieve that ultimate knowledge from Swami, for us it is punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani jathare shayanam, as Adi Shankara says in the Bhajagovindam, rebirth and redeath, rebirth and redeath again and again we will go into the womb of the mother. That is why possibly we have to keep digging graves after graves, never breaking out of the cycle of birth and death. And then, though Swami smiles at Dr. Alreja and blesses him, pulling him out of the pit, he doesn't confer what Dr. Alreja is pleading for. And Dr. Alreja wakes up. It is now time to go to Swami. And in his mind, he decides, he is determined, I am going to ask Swami for the ultimate. He has to give me this. With this determination, he goes to the backside of the Purna Chandra Auditorium, where Swami was residing in a small room. There's a long corridor that he has to walk through and as he's walking through at the end of the corridor near the green room of the Purnachandra auditorium is Swami sitting there and even as he's walking, Swami starts chanting that exact same shloka from Sankhya Yoga and Dr. Alreja knows this connection. I mean, we have a separate dream world and a waking world, but for Swami all are one, all the four states all the four avasthas, Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti and Turiya, all the four avasthas, all the four states, waking, sleep, deep sleep and the fourth state beyond, all are one. So he is stating that shloka and Dr. Alreja comes to him and says, directly he continues from where they left off in the dream because that's what Swami is doing. He says, Swami, you have to confer this on me. And Swami says, what to do Dr. Alreja, you keep digging pits, you keep digging pits. He says, that's why Swami, to stop me and give me salvation, you have to confer, you have to tell this. Once again, Swami just smiles, brushes it aside and starts talking about different other topics, about the general hospital, basically diverting away Dr. Alreja from that. But Dr. Alreja too, as Swami had called him, a paripakwa soul, a soul that is ripe and ready. And that is why he says, Swami, before I go, I have one question to ask. What is it, Alreja? And Alreja, Dr. Alreja says, Swami, there is a story of Yagnyavalka and King Janaka. Sage Yagnyavalka and King Janaka. It is said that, you know, King Janaka had once posed a question, who can give me Brahma Vidya or Brahma Jnana? And I want it to happen quick. 
Now, Maharaja Janaka is no ordinary soul. He is a great soul and Swami has spoken so highly of him many times. A soul who was steeped in the world and yet was not of the world. He was like the lotus flower that grows from the mud but has no taint of the mud on it. That was Emperor Janaka. And he says that when I mount my horse, I put one leg in one stirrup. Before I can cross my other leg to the other stirrup, can anyone provide me or give me Brahma Vidya? Sage Yagya Valka comes forward and says, I will do that. Maharaj, if you obey whatever I say. Yes. What do you want from me? I want your mind, he says. Yes, I give you my mind. Come. He takes the Maharaj walking behind him and makes him sit in the middle of the street on a hot day. And he says, be here. And Yagnivalka goes to a nearby uh, tree and just sits under it. The Maharaj Janaka is sitting there on the road, unbothered by what anyone is saying. Different soldiers come and tell Maharaj, maybe offer you a seat. Would you like some drink? He doesn't respond. He is just solid like a rock there. No movement at all. The wives, everyone is worried what happened. Has some black magic been done on the king? He is not responding at all. And when the worry reaches its zenith, all of them go to Yagnavalka and they say, Oh sage, what have you done to the emperor? You have incapacitated him. Without him to rule, what do we do? No, he is not incapacitated. Oh Janaka, he says, Yes, master, he rises. He says, Janaka, you did not respond to any of them. Why? Because, oh master, you told me to give you my mind. Once my mind is with you, what can I do? I can't do anything. You are ready, Janaka. Yagnavalka says, and he says, now mount your horse. And when Maharaja Janaka puts one leg, one foot in one stirrup and is about to cross, Yagnavalka comes and whispers something to Maharaj Janaka. And before the other foot can go into the other stirrup, he receives Brahma Vidya. And here, Dr. Alreja asks Swami, Swami, please tell me, what was it that Yagnya Valka whispered to Maharaj Janaka? And Swami smiles. He understands the yearning of Dr. Alreja and he knows that this being, this soul is now ready and it is mature. So Swami says, I will tell you. Swami gets up from his chair. Dr. Alreja is sitting on the floor. Swami comes to him, bends down and he says, Tat Tvam Asi. Tat Tvam Asi. The moment Swami says this, Dr. Alreja is off in a trance. A meditative bliss that lasts hours. He has no idea of what's happening. He has that great indescribable feeling of oneness with the entire universe. The same Swami who sent him into that state is the one who rouses him out of that state. It says, Alreja, you did not go to your hospital. There's a smile on Dr. Alreja's face. And Swami asks him, did you experience Tat Tvam Asi? Tat means that, Tvam means you, Asi means are, you are that. Thou art that. It means the greatest Advaita. You and the Lord are one. There is no second. Everything is one. In fact, Swami has also beautifully explained this as Tattvam Asi. Instead of Tattvam Asi, he says Tattvam Asi. Tattvam means essence. Asi means ease. There is only essence. And that essence is what Dr. Alreja tasted that day. Dear brothers and sisters, the Swami who is in our life is no ordinary being. Just with a whisper of Tattva Masi, He can grant us the experience of Tattva Masi. He is waiting there with the waters of His love, with the fertilizer of the values, with the fertile ground of sadhana, waiting for the tree to mature. May we also imbibe this water imbibe these fertilizers, imbibe the fertility from the ground of sadhana and grow into a paripakwa or a ripened tree like Dr. Alreja so that our master too will whisper those words in our ears 
and we will achieve the ultimate peace the ultimate contentment and the ultimate joy a joy from which we will never return for the sake of any other paltry joys the cosmic empire of infinite bliss for which we will just throw away all the paltry little toys and trinkets that we hold on to thinking of them as sources of happiness dear swami please bless us that we continue our sadhana with renewed energy and vigor and one pointed focus on you may the love that we have in our heart for you keep growing every passing moment thank you jai sai ram